Hello and welcome to another Having Coffee with Smog. Today we are going to talk about a very important topic. So whenever you have this situation that you start something new, that you can choose any different language or platform to support your system, your solution, you may want to pick the platform or the technique or the language first, or you may actually consider approaching it from model perspective, like come up with best representation and structure of your data, and then looking at that, pick the best database, pick the best um, platform pick the best language that you're being using to code what you came up with. And to come up with a good design, you need some way to represent it, right? You need some sort of commonly agreed language or platform that you would convey whatever information that you're having, right? So for example, in C++, you would use class declaration, right? We have a header, we have class, name of the class, some uh, brackets, and inside we put our fields, our method names, given types, uh, parameter types, all of that, right? And that's all nice, but it's kind of hard to read when you have a lot of those classes and you don't really know how they communicate with each other. So to cope with that, uh, we use UML or Unified Modeling Language. So basically, a class is represented by a box that has the name of the class at the top, the fields below, and at the bottom there are methods. And these boxes are connected with arrows of different kinds that represent some sort of relation between one class and the other. And we can come up with pretty complex hierarchies just to represent the whole system. And this is a professional way of describing such a things, right? So you have sequence diagrams, case diagrams, use case diagrams, activity diagrams, component diagrams, all sorts of diagrams. And you need a good tool to help you build that. Of course, you can draw it on a piece of paper or a whiteboard, right? But eventually you need a way to transfer it back to a wiki page or documentation or some other place that it can be reproduced many, many times and sent to different people and perhaps altered, altered sometime in the future. So how can you effectively do that? What can you use? Well, you have different tools at your disposal, right? You have commercial grade tools, you have some free tools, you can use PowerPoint, you can use whatever right anything if you're using uh, like ide suite like for example intellij or microsoft visual studio um, you can write classes you can just click a button and the ide will generate a visual representation of your existing classes and that's it there you have it but the thing is when you sit down with other developers and you're discussing how the feature should be uh, built, how it should behave, oftentimes you need something fast and you need it in a form that will allow you quick editing going back and forth. So forget writing classes and building a file structure and everything and keeping all that mess in IDE just to come up with some picture that you can discuss while you actually come up with ideas and bounce them off of each other. So to actually um, work around this, there are different tools. And one of the tools that I recently learned is PlantyUML. And I would like to recommend this tool to you today. So let's do a quick search for PlantyUML. Boom, here we go. PlantyUML, easily create beautiful UML diagrams from simple textual description. Okay, sounds great, let's go in. What do these diagrams look like? So I go into class. And I scroll down and there I have it, like this terrible, ugly diagram. Okay, I was repelled by this design with maroon slash yellow colors, which yeah, are not really my cup of tea. 
But then I learned that you can actually style these diagrams. You can actually create a better color schemes for your diagrams and have them fit whatever style is of your liking. I will show you that. And we even used it in Office to play a game called Detective, where you become a police detective that needs to solve a mystery case and build complex mind maps of relations between um, different characters in the game. And you need to somehow mark how those characters are connected to each other and how they play together. Let me show you. So if you're thinking about playing detective game, be aware this is a little spoiler. So you can color different classes differently. As, as you can see, you can come up with some different arrows. And all of that is basically created by text. So you have textual representation for on the left. You don't need to draw anything. You need to, don't need to connect any arrows, but you have pretty wild and vast and various way, means of arranging the graphs. It's not perfect, to be honest, right? But it's good enough. It's good. It's so good that you will actually want to use it in your project, in your uh, actual day to day life. And why is that? Well, as you can see, the diagrams are pretty complex. It's very easy to actually come up with something like this and it saves so much time. You won't have to photograph your diagrams from the whiteboard or scan the papers and put them on your wikis or anything like that. There is a lot of plugins for Plant UML and you can most likely use it in your favorite editor. So for example, Atom has multiple plugins that will help you support this language. You can view it live as you edit, or you can view it as after saving the doc. Even highlighting of the language that is used here to come up with diagram is available. So everything in one place. You can use Atom or you can use code from Microsoft. It's available for many, many platforms. Or you can go to Plant UML online and check it out there. Also, if you want to use class diagrams, you need to install GraphViz. Uh, you need this secondary tool that will allow PlantUML to come up with placement for different classes and how they should be arranged. Anyway, let's get back to our PlantUML. So in order to come up with a diagram, you need to start UML with this tag, right? So we are starting and ending. You need both of those tags to actually come up with anything. Inside, we can put the name of the class. We start with a class and we start with a name. Let's call it my class. Okay, so there we have it, my class. It's a little bit big, but we can scroll back. And my class can contain some fields. Boom. So let's open this curly braces and let's put in some fields, a couple of fields. And as you can see, this is following closely the UML um, structure. So at the top we have the name of the class, a little C to show us that this is actually a class, uh, an int, a number, and a string. And the third section is for methods, method one. All we have to do to put our method in the third field is add the brackets at the end. So we have method one, method two. Okay, easy enough. Maybe we want some different kind of separation. All we have to do is just enter and add two lines and then we have it. It's a different separation. Easy? Exactly. We, have, we can have two or more or for example we can have a dotted line, a different kind of separation. That's nice. Also we may come up with a name for our section. So we all we have to do is just start this and let's call it strings also. So as we can see our classes can get pretty complex very easily. So let's go back to the original form so it's not too cluttered. And now we may distinguish a field between private, protected, public, or maybe Java style package protected. So what are we going to do? If we want the field to be private, we just follow the UML notation. So we add minus in front of that and we can see it has a little square. So protected is a hashtag. Maybe we want public. Public is a plus. So we have a plus. And as you can see here, we have three uh, different types of the markers. If we want package protected, we use tilde, which is filled triangle, a way of showing us that this method is indeed 
package protected. Let's remove this for now so we don't have too much clutter. And then we want to come up with a second class, right? We need a second class in order to actually make a class diagram. So we come up with class that will be called second. Second class. Easy enough. All right, so we have a second class, a secret field and a secret method. As you can see, in one class I specified some types and the other one for methods I don't have any types. And this is very good because we don't need to know everything when we design our classes. Uh, that's the difference between using the actual class uh, representation from an IDE or something similar and this. Right, so this is way easier. It's only a tool to represent stuff, to give you a better way of thinking, a visual form of representation. And as you can see, it's not very pretty right now. So in order to make it prettier, I'm going to use some predefined style sheets that I came up with. And I'm going to be using dark blue because this is what I want right now. All right, looking much better, pretty, good. Now I can work with that. And we need to say that, for example, one class is inheriting from the other one. So let's see. Let's have second class inherit from the original my class. How are we going to do it? Well, it will be very easy. All we have to do is just write the name of the class. So my class, uh, and it, it will be inherited by second class. So I stopped here. As you can see right now, plant UML automatically creates a new element as soon as we start writing our relation. And this is another feature for you so you don't have to write classes that are pretty simple and don't actually contain anything. So as soon as I complete the name, the second class becomes a child of my class. It's easy as that. And it's very nice to remember one thing it's not necessarily a UML tool. You can use any form of notation you like or you need. So for example, right now I'm using this arrow, but if I decide to use different arrow, I can have it just like that by editing the shape of the arrow. Or maybe I want a composition arrow, or maybe I want aggregation arrow, or maybe I want just straight arrow or empty arrow. Everything is possible. And maybe I'll come up with a second class that will be inheriting from that and I call it third class. And let's call, let's have a note here. Note left, whatever that means. <laughs> and we can have a new line slash n. Right, very nice. As you can see, it's already becoming a full-fledged class diagram. Right now we can represent a complex hierarchy this way. It's very pretty, you can use it in your docs and not be ashamed of something that you created. So let's try it in red. Very nice. Maybe green. Also nice. Let's try with green for now. So we have my class, second class, third class, and a note. As you can see, note is placed just under the notation of the previous class. This way we know that this note belongs to this class. All right we can have a dotted notation, dotted arrow. All we have to do is place two dots. Or maybe we want a longer arrow, more dots. This way our graph becomes more and more complex and we can easily manipulate the way that our classes are built. So if I want third class to be on the right of my class, all I have to do is write left on the arrow. So imagine an arrow that has left written over it. It's actually quite fun, right? Makes a uh, makes generation of these uh, graphs very pleasant, very easy. So as you can see, this is only the beginning. I won't go and dive into all of the needs and grids of the plant UML because there is a lot of ground to cover. So this is what I wanted to share with you, my discovery, uh, maybe use something you might consider using this tool instead of a whiteboard or a notebook that you lean over and then you have to reproduce it in some digital form, right? So this is easy, but there is one issue remaining. How did I style it? How did I come up with this beautiful colors, right? As you can see, the original uh, version without any styles is kind of ugly. 
So how did I style it? As you can see at the top, I included external style sheet. And this style sheet is written by me. It's called plant UML red dress. And you can find it on the GitHub. Just type red dress there. All you have to do to use it, you define this constant. Which colors would you like? Would you like light or dark? And there are four colors for you to choose from right now. Blue, green, red, and orange. Then you include URL with the URL to my GitHub to the raw version of this style plant UML. More details you can find, of course, online on the plant UML website. So if you enjoyed this little tutorial, consider subscribing. And as always, thanks for having a coffee with Smog. See you in the next one. Cheers.